There, in the center of the web, neatly woven in block letters, was a message. It said, Some Pig. Ha ha ha! Welcome to Browse Held High! You know, a big part of why I do this show is to illustrate the kind of creative freedom that most artists simply won't allow themselves. I firmly believe that art can challenge, can shatter taboos and misconceptions, and in doing so, redefine cultural boundaries. Such is the case with this off maligned 1974 film by Belgian filmmaker Terry Zeno. In a tour de force one-man show by Dominique Garni, who also wrote the film, audiences are challenged with a barrage of tough questions about humanity and its relation to nature. While it never held a theatrical release, it did have a limited festival run, building its notoriety and essentially banning it in Australia. Its controversial subject and explicit execution has made it one of the rarest films that isn't a lost film. Until 2009, when the German distributor Camera Obscura and the Swedish company Nyota Films released Region 2 copies of the movie, which I was lucky enough to get over Amazon. This film is the infamous Vase de Noches. In the English-speaking world, it's been retitled Wedding Trough. But it's much better known under its informal title, THE PIG FUCKING MOVIE! You know what? Fuck this fucking noise! Fuck it all! Don't you it? I'm burning this down! I'm just... I'm burning this down! I'm burning it all down! Let's just start the film so I can start the burning! Even just starting with the credits, knowing that this movie is about pig fucking is painful! I mean, just look at these people! Look at all the shit stains who can be blamed for this movie! Yeah, fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you too! Fuck you! Fuck you and the pig you fucked in on! Well, admittedly, it's not much. It's not like people were lining up to do this movie. I hope. So, Dominic Garney has a farm. E I E I O. And on this farm, he has a pig. E I. Yeah, that's not funny anymore, I'll stop. And immediately, we get a big heaping helping of cruelty and abuse of birds. Puts a doll's head on a damn bird. This, of course, symbolizes the fact that the director wanted this to be symbolic. Fuck this, I'm not reading into this. Birds here. Birds birding around. Having bird sex. Just spending their time being the other white meat. And one gets its head cut off. Bird. Head. Motif. There. Maybe. I don't care. Moving on. So, they're on a farm, and the guy and the pig do farm stuff. And guy stuff. And pig stuff. The ducks have no comment. Ducks, there, don't care, superfluous. It's like a Greek chorus and only quacks. But you probably want to hear about the pig fucking in the pig fucking movie. So you're probably thinking for fucking real, is there fucking pig fucking in the pig fucking movie? Yes, there's fucking pig fucking in the pig fucking movie! Look at all the fucking pig fucking! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Do it! Oh man! Oh! Suey! Oh! Suey! Hey everybody! Let's all pork the pork! Pig fucking! Every other thing in this movie is overshadowed by pig fucking! Everything! It's this hellish light that illuminates every other aspect of the film! Everything else is pig fuck tinted! And it doesn't matter how much classical music gets played! Here we come, a pig fucking among the leaves so green! Because that's the most interesting thing he does! It's more interesting than his other hobbies. When he's not tenderly fondling the pig's supple teats, he's collecting... I don't know, leaves? In glass jars? I don't know, nothing he's doing is shocking me. Given his primary pursuit, you could show clips of him collecting other people's toenail clippings, and I wouldn't be phased. But he... This soundtrack... Butterfly in the sky... I could go twice as high... Take a look, it's in a book, pig fucking movie... So, what's wrong with this guy? Doesn't he know he shouldn't play hide the sausage with the animal that sausage comes from? Isn't there some nice human who will tolerate him? Well, the best I can tell, there are no other people. Most people who've seen this movie, 
scream for an hour or twelve, and then guess that this takes place after the apocalypse. So A, there are no other people to bang, and B, there are no people to judge him if he doesn't bang humans. So it's like a really freaky version of a boy and his dog. Well, an alternate title is A Man and His Pig. So maybe it is sci-fi. Mad Max Beyond Pig Fucker Dome. And the saddest thing is, they kind of make a really cute couple. Hey, honey. Sleep well? Good. Oh, no, no, don't get up. I'll make breakfast, darling. You know, to say nothing of their more, uh, <coughs> intimate moments. And then the... Oh, this soundtrack. It's like I'm watching this with the aliens from Sesame Street. And the worst thing about this? It's dull. Once the man starts tenderizing, and after you pick up your jaw from the floor, it's so, so damn dull. Most of it is just the guy going through his dull hobbies, the birds doing dull bird things, and, well, shock value? Here's the thing. This movie might not be all that shocking. I mean, yes, it's shocking in its explicitness, but not in its content. We, as a culture, have become so desensitized that sex with animals has become... funny. What is going on here? Uh, inner species erotica. Before you come, Tarzan only have animals. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's a good look. Spice. I mean his friends! I know! Take the bad horse we fool, or he'll make you his man. Keep fucking that chicken. Get <laughs> AIDS and then fuck a deer and kill it with my AIDS. Why would you call me a pig fucker? Well, let's see. First of all, you fuck pigs. Oh, yeah. We as the bourgeois class that Terry Zeno is trying to offend, has grasped the concept and mocked it. And so if he's trying to shock me, he needs to do a lot better. And no sooner did that thought enter my head, viewing this film for the first time, that he actually, genuinely shocked me. Biology be damned, the sow has piglets. Mazel tov! Is it kosher to say Mazel Tov to a pig? Is it kosher to even think about being kosher in this context? And we'll ponder that after the break. So, we all good and upsold? Good! Back to bacon. This might shock you, but they didn't have the funds to make convincing Twilight Zone-style half-human pig children, so they just used regular piglets. But hey, you know what? This is the best part of the movie. Even if it does no more than appeal to the same part of my brain that likes lolcats. Ooh, look at the little piggies! Look at their cute, look at their little snouts and the little curly tails! Oh. And he even has a little dinner party with them, and oh, it's so cute! They have little dinner plates, and oh, they don't eat like people. Silly man for trying to get the piggies to eat like peoples. Silly piggies for not trying to eat like peoples. Oh, yeah. They die. They die because he kills them. He hangs them. With little pig-sized nooses. In a row, like criminals sent to the gallows. I'm not going to show that. And yet, for some reason, this movie is not called The Pig Lynching Movie. Even more disturbing is the scene where the mother pig finds the piglets, squeals horribly, and drowns herself. Okay, pig drowning herself. Let's make that watchable. Fixed. He buries the pig, and in what I think is an act of solidarity and remorse, 
buries himself next to her. That's rather solemn. Hey, look, an animal that hasn't been abused yet. Okay, okay, um, cutting the snark. I'll at least try to understand this film on its own terms. The theme, if it can be said to have one, is the line between animals and humanity. The man in this movie continues to blur that line. He constantly treats the animals he lives with in a human capacity. By doing stuff like... putting the doll's heads on birds. And... trying to get his piglets to eat off plates. And... I'll think of a third thing, give me a minute. So once the most human-like animal in his pen has died, he now feels a true loneliness. It is rather hard to fuck a chicken, after all. Ducks... Well, fuck a duck is too fun of a phrase not to use, so he can't fuck a duck. So, what does he do with his spare time? Does he write a song about the paradox of the human animal? Campaign against speciesism? Mow the lawn? Read a book about pigs? Do yoga? Do the dishes? Sit on his ass for hours pondering what he's done with his life so far? Do literally anything other than what he does next? Cause... Poop tea! He boils his feces into a liquid and... Tea! It's like a whole act! It's a sequence! It's a montage of him preparing his feces in different ways! Behold the closest I will ever get to reviewing Sallow! Manja! It's funny because it's poop! And then he hangs himself. And he floats up to heaven. Oh, look at that shot. Oh, the beauty. Oh, the joy. Huh? Why? This? Fucking this? You requested this! People have requested this to me! People have wanted me to see this! People wanted me to see this movie about some guy? Did, what was this deal supposed to be anyway? The director identifies him in the documentary as an autistic... Oh, for fuck's sake! This is a movie in which some idiot and his idiot friend pointlessly fuck an animal and kill its offspring. And why? I'm pretty sure this movie did that just to piss you off. This is a movie that hates you. It's not just that it's bad. It's not just that the editing is shoddy and the cinematography is horrid. It's not just that the story is weak and the central performance is vague. It's not just bad, it's sadistically evil. I mean, yeah, get mad! This is a movie worth getting mad over! Burn things if you must! I mean, why? This was made! People devoted time and effort to make this! They rented pigs that they could fucking kill! Why was this movie made? What? Possible purpose could this movie have? How dare you review the pig fucking movie? I was gonna review the pig fucking movie. The Cinema Snob of TheCinemaSnob.com? I will not have some child pretender take first glance at a film that is rightfully mine. Yeah, how dare you review the pig fucking movie before either of us could? Phalus of Phalus.com? Sure am, Ralph, and man are you in trouble. We've been planning a crossover review on the pig fucking movie for months now. Oh, cool, I'd love to see your take on it. Damn it, we can't do it now that you've done it. You've stolen reviewer dibs from us. Reviewer dibs? The unspoken law of reviewing. The reviewer that first reviews a bad movie passes reviewer dibs. After that, 
any other review on said bad movie is automatically considered inferior because of the review with reviewer Dibs. Oh yeah, like how people panned and loathed Obscure Sloop as Riffing a Birdemic after watching your Riffing a Birdemic. Don't you talk about my girlfriend, Ralph! Don't mock the law, mini-me. This isn't based on superstition. This is based on hard economics. Economics? I got it right here. It's not hard to see that once a service is provided for a particular product, any further services on the same product will ultimately devalue that product, and the market will start to become saturated. In layman's terms, your review of the pig-fucking movie cheapens our review of the pig-fucking movie. You could still do an episode on it. Oh, and let this slippery slope continue, and after we do an episode, Diamanda Hoggins gonna wanna talk about the pig fucking movie, and then, well, she... And the blockbuster buster, and who knows what other backwater critic is gonna review it. The market will be flooded with clips of pig fucking. And now that you've gone and reviewed it, we both have to go back to square one and do a cost-benefit analysis of any future production surrounding this pig fucking product. This product. You're underestimating the value of this product. This is premium grade bad movie material. The hatred and the mockability that could be mined from this can yield... Who knows what kind of metric tonnage. The bad movie is a valuable natural resource, and when we hit a mother load like this, the yields from it have to be conserved. We all know that we're working with limited resources, and who knows, in a few years we could easily hit peak bad movie, and none of us are going to be prepared for that. Wait, wait, wait. We're fighting over this. Yes! We're fighting over the pig fucking movie. Fuck yeah, we're fucking fighting over the fucking pig fucking movie! The pig fucking movie. Yeah. This is what we fight over. This is the kind of thing we build our livelihoods on. Yeah. This is our currency. Our bargaining chips. Bribes are made with this. Threats are made with this. We operate solely on a bad movie based economy. We're like men in a prison cell fighting over the last scrap of meat. And that meat... is the pig fucking movie. I've been trying to make a buck off of men fornicating with livestock. And I was going to help you make a buck off men fornicating with livestock. Anyway, that could make a really cool episode. Can't wait to see what you do with it. Later! Brad? Yeah? What is this feeling that's washed over me that engulfs my soul in darkness and makes me fearful for an uncertain future? That would be angst, my friend. There's lots of piggies living piggy lives You can see them out for dinner with the piggy wives Clutching forks and knives to eat them